everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you my first impressions of Addiction makeup. So if you haven't heard of Addiction, they are a luxury Japanese makeup brand and I actually wasn't too familiar with them until recently when I went to Tokyo and I was looking around the department stores to try out some new makeup products and the Addiction counters were so pretty. They had some of the prettiest counters with gorgeous makeup, especially in terms of colorful eyeshadow. And so I was instantly attracted to their line and thought I would pick up some products to share with all of you. So in this video, I'm going to do a almost full face of Addiction makeup. I have their Skin Protector Color Control, which I'll use as a lightweight base. And then I have four of their single eyeshadows and one of their blush. So if you're interested in learning more about Addiction Tokyo Makeup, then just stick around. So to start off, let's just talk a little bit about the brand. So what really attracted me to their makeup stand is, by and large, Japanese makeup tends to air more on the lightweight, sort of natural side of things. You don't see a lot of super colorful makeup. And for me personally, especially when it comes to eyeshadows, I'm always really interested in unique colors and shades and textures. And so when I saw their counter, I was really attracted by the fact that they had so many options. So you can see here, these are all of the shades that they offer. And the way Addiction works is that you can buy these individually and basically DIY your own eyeshadow palette, which I think is really fun. They also do have some pre-made palettes, but I wanted to have the full experience. And so I sat down with a sales associate and basically asked her what were her recommendations, what were the top selling eyeshadows. And so I would say that the eyeshadows that I ended up picking up were kind of a combination of my personal preferences but also I was trying to really get a sense of what is popular in Japan and so this is a little bit more muted than what I would go for if I was just making a palette totally from scratch on my own. Before this first experience with Addiction I wanted to make sure I was trying some of their top shades. I did, however, pick up this really fun blush because I did still want some pop of color. So hopefully on the whole, this is a fun makeup look. As a side note, I will just say if you guys are ever shopping in Japan, the experience in department stores is really nice and luxurious. So I don't speak very much Japanese at all, and so I was really pleased that they actually had a translator come to work with me and the sales associate in order to help me select products. So the department store provided someone who translated. That was really, really helpful. I mean, it took me about an hour <laughs> there to really you know, try out their products and and build this custom palette. So I was really, really grateful for all of the support from both the sales associate and the translator. And also the whole experience very much is a white glove luxury experience. So for one, when the sales associate is putting products on your face, she's using Addiction's own Fude makeup brushes, which you can see over here. Let me actually give you guys a close up. So yeah, a little bit hard to see here, but they do have their own line of natural hair makeup brushes and they were incredibly soft. Honestly, if I go back, I might pick up some of their makeup brushes. So that was a really nice touch to the experience. And then after you've finished selecting your products and are ready to check out, they actually have this whole white glove experience where the sales associate puts on white gloves and has the new products that you picked out and then basically opens them in front of you so you can verify that what's in the box is the product that you wanted. And so all of that just felt very nice, very luxe, very different from any makeup experience I've had in the US. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's products. So to start off, let's try out the Skin Protector Color Control, which has SPF 40 PA++++. I have this in the shade 3, Fresh Beige. So this is a pretty light product. So they also have a clear version of this, which is basically just sunscreen and also a pink version for brightening. I did try the pink version out because they gave me a smaller sample of that. And if you have a yellow based undertone like myself, I wouldn't recommend that unless you really want brightening because the pink really kind of gives you that white cast effect on the face. 
not my favorite, but I think this beige one is pretty good if you want something more natural. So hopefully you can tell that basically just provided a little bit of a healthy sheen to my hand and then also did a little bit of blurring. So let me first just apply this to one half of my face. And I have tried this product out before and found it to be quite nice for kind of a no makeup makeup day. Of course, today we are doing a full face of makeup, so we'll see if this provides me enough coverage. If not, I might go in with some additional products just to amp up the coverage. But the reason I picked up this product, even though it was kind of different from the overall vibe I was looking for, Overall, for Addiction Makeup, the reason I was attracted to it was it was more kind of in your face and colorful and sparkly than other Japanese makeup. But when I was asking them what their overall top products were, they highly, highly recommended this. They said for a while this was considered one of the top cosmetics products in Japan. And so even though this is kind of something that's very natural and and very much kind of an everyday no makeup makeup sort of look, I thought I would try it out just because whenever I'm traveling, I get a lot of FOMO in terms of, you know, what if I don't pick it up and then it's hard to pick up in my home country. So here we are. But anyway, so here we have the product on this side of my face and nothing on this side. I do have my skincare and sunscreen and everything on already. So this is kind of like an extra layer of sunscreen. I think you can see this has a slight brightening effect on the skin. That's something I'm not a huge fan of with a lot of East Asian complexion products, but they do like that sort of white cast <laughs> look on the face. So it has some of that going on. Um, it also definitely adds a bit of a hydrated look, which I really like. And I think it does provide some subtle blurring. So today I am gonna need some more coverage because I do have some blemishes, my skin's been pretty unhappy lately. And so I will have to go in with some other products, but I do think if you are having a really good skin day or if you just, you know, don't really wanna put on anything with coverage, this is a really nice base. So now let's also apply some to the other side of the face. And as you can tell, this blends in pretty easily with fingers. It's basically like applying a primer or a very light tinted sunscreen. I do think if you have deeper skin though, this might be a little bit finicky to work with. As you can tell on my forehead, I do have to spend a little bit more time just blending this in because my forehead is where I'm the most tan. But here we go. So here is the product on both sides of my face. What do you guys think about this effect? On the whole, I would say for my makeup preferences, this is not a must have. Usually for me, I either just put no coverage on my face or I put something that's more of a medium coverage. So I wouldn't really run out and purchase this but for the fact that you know this was highly recommended. But if you are someone who really likes that no makeup makeup look and you want to get that glass skin effect, this will definitely give that to you. So I went off camera to finish off the rest of my face. All the products will be linked in the description box down below. Though I will quickly just call out the other Japanese makeup products that I'm wearing. So I have the rest of that sample of the Suku foundation on my face. If you'd like to see a more thorough review of that foundation, definitely check out my full face of Suku makeup video. And then on my lips, I also have my Suku lipstick. This is the Glow Formulation in shade four. So let's first do some swatches of all these other products. So let me start with the eyeshadows. So first we have Tiny Shell 022P. This is in the shimmer formulation and is a really beautiful natural peachy tone. This is apparently the best selling shade that they have in Japan. Next we have Shanghai Breakfast. This is more of a purpley brownish tone. I wanted to go in the purple direction for this look since I thought that would make it a little bit different from your standard neutral palette. Then we have Gypsy Queen. This is kind of like a deeper version of Shanghai Breakfast. This is what I'm gonna use to really deepen up the look. And then finally we have Mariage or Marriage. I'm not really sure which one. It's spelled like marriage but only with one R instead of two. So I don't know if it's a typo or if this is mariage. 
but this is a beautiful glitter topper. Like, look at that. Isn't that giving like gorgeous Pat McGrath vibes? I am gonna have to do a swatch comparison later on with Astral Solstice from Pat McGrath, but that is so pretty. And then finally, we have the blush in Orchid Dusk. This is sort of a satin pearl formulation as well. So as you can see, that's much brighter than the rest of these, but I was really attracted to the shade because to me, this was pretty unique compared to my existing blush collection and sort of reminded me of that Dior blush that always is sold out. And so I'm also gonna have to do a swatch comparison between this and Venusian Sunrise from Pat McGrath because I think that's the closest I have in my existing collection. But first things first, let's apply these shadows to my lids. So let's start first with Tiny Shell and I have here my worker brush from Sonia G. And this is kind of an all over the lid base color. So I'm gonna try to apply these today in the way that was recommended by the sales associate. So not necessarily my typical method of, you know, starting with a transition shade and then building out the crease and the outer corner. Instead, I'm gonna do this more of the kind of Japanese makeup style way. So first, I'm gonna use this as a base color just all over my lid. And when the sales associate first recommended the shade to me, I was a little hesitant because as you can tell, it's very similar to my natural lid color. And so I didn't really wanna pay like $20 for a shade that didn't look like much since these are pretty pricey individual shadows. Basically what she said is for the base color, it's recommended to use something that actually is quite similar to your natural lid shade. This will just kind of serve as a nice backdrop. And this is a really beautiful shade. I mean, it's very subtle as you can tell, but if you wanted something that was just a really gorgeous everyday look, you could definitely just use this and maybe put on some liner to deepen it up. And this will have a really beautiful overall effect. And let me actually just cut down the brightness a little bit so you can see that color a little bit better. But yeah, very, very pretty, very nice pearly sheen. So the next step is to go in with Shanghai Breakfast and to sort of sweep this all over the lid as well, but keeping it a little bit lower than that previous shade. So I'm just using the other side of that Sonia G Builder and just kind of layering that on top. And in general with Japanese makeup, there seems to be a preference for more sheer layers rather than something that's really in your face. So as you can see, this is a really gorgeous and I think at least in my collection, quite unique purple shade. It actually is overall on the warm side, even though it's a purple because it has kind of a brownish undertone to it. And so that's why it matches pretty well with this peachy shade. But I still think it's more unique than just going in with a brown. And now going in with Gypsy Queen, we're going to deepen up this look. So I'm gonna take this on the tip of this brush and sort of concentrate this along the lash line area. Almost like a liner, but a little bit more diffused. And it's funny because I normally actually don't use this worker brush from Sonia G very often because this is not typically the type of makeup technique that I like to use. But I do think this worker brush is really great if you like this sort of technique. Okay, I might have taken out those wings a little far. <laughs> Let me try to refine this a bit. So let's go in with my builder brush back into Gypsy Queen and put this more just along the lash line. I am gonna use eyeliner later as well, but if you wanted something that was a more natural look, you could just stop it here. And then taking my Esim 27 brush, I'm just going to soften out all the edges here since I did take this out a little bit far. This is overall supposed to be a pretty soft look. And now for the final touch on the lids, I'm gonna go in with Marriage or Mariage and just scatter this all over. I'm gonna use this probably a little bit more heavily than is recommended for that kind of 
more natural Japanese look, but I do really love this glitter topper. As you can tell, this is very high impact. If you've seen my Suku makeup video, you'll know that for Suku, the glitter toppers they have are definitely more on the natural side. So if you want something that is more of a very subtle extra sheen on the lid, I would steer you towards their formula. But if you want something that is giving more Pat McGrath vibes, then I think Addiction is really beautiful. And that's just lovely. That was really impressive. No fallout whatsoever. Just very easy to apply on the lids. And the reason I picked this shade was both because she said it was the most popular shade and so I was curious to try it out but also because I think the fact that this doesn't have any base pigment to it will just mean it goes well with really any sort of look. So now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna first go back in with Shanghai Breakfast. Run this all over that lower lash line area. Then deepen that up a little bit with Gypsy Queen just on the outer portions. And then I'm not sure how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna take a little bit of that flaky topper and try to just dab that on the lower lash line as well. Okay, a little bit of it is coming off. It's usually hard to get flaky toppers on such a small area. So here we have the final eyeshadow look. I think this is really pretty. And as you could tell, if you did not go in with the topper, this would be just a really nice, very natural everyday look. But the topper definitely brought this sort of disco ball effect to the whole look. When the sales associate demoed all of these shades on my eyes, she put a much smaller amount of the glitter topper. And so it was more just like a little bit of a twinkle in the eye. Whereas today I definitely put a lot more on since I'm quite a fan of sparkle, but you can definitely tone this look down if you'd like something that's a little bit more natural. So now let's go in with this blush, which I think is so much fun. So I have my cheek brush from Sonia G. And as you can see, quite a good amount of pigment picks up with this. So let's see how this applies to the cheeks. So it's quite pigmented upon initial application. This is definitely one where you don't want to be going in with a heavy hand. You want to just kind of carefully build. But I think this color is lots of fun. I don't know that it actually goes super well with the rest of this look, but that's okay. This is just going to be the pop of color today. And in case you're curious, I did also buy an Addiction Tokyo palette to store these singles in. The reason I haven't put them in yet is I'm actually not sure if I want to store this blush in the same place as these eyeshadows, because as you can tell, it's not really, you know, the same vibe overall. So I might eventually pick up either a different color story in terms of eyeshadows or a different blush that's a little bit more on the neutral end of things. In which case I would want to store these in two different palettes. But here they are together. I don't know, what do you guys think about this combo? I think definitely I would in the future use these products separately for the most part. I'd probably pair this really intense pinky blush more so either with a totally neutral look that's a little bit cool leaning or with something that's just like a very cute pinky look. Like I think this might go well, for example, with Utopian Dream from Pat McGrath. I think the eye look and the lips are overall leaning a lot more towards the warm side of things. And so that's making the cheeks look very different <laughs> and so I don't know that this is the best pairing but just in case you guys are curious you can buy these empty palettes from Addiction. They're pretty simple I wouldn't say they're the most luxurious feeling. If anything I think this clear acrylic packaging actually looks more luxe but basically you pop this out and then there's some glue on the back that allows you to stick these in here. So this is the pan that you can either stick six eyeshadows into or four eyeshadows and one blush. I was originally going to build this palette in today's video, but because of what I just talked about and not necessarily wanting to store all of these 
in the same place. I'm gonna hold off on that for now. So here we have the final look with some eyeliner on. So before we get into my overall thoughts and impressions, let's do some comparison swatches. So let's first compare with my Divine Rose palette from Pat McGrath. Here we have Astral Solstice, which is the shade I immediately thought of when I first saw Mariage. And yeah, okay, they're pretty similar. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess if you ever wanted a dupe for Pat McGrath's Blitz Astral shades, I would say that, you know, if all you want to do is pick up one shade or a couple shades, definitely check out the glitter toppers from Addiction because you can buy these as singles and they're more affordable that way than buying a whole mothership. Of course, overall, the mothership is more affordable per shade, but if you're just interested in these sparkly ones, that's pretty similar in terms of the texture, the formulation. I mean, this one looks a little bit deeper. It has different colored sparkles in it. So the Addiction one has a little bit of coppery sparkle as well. So not just kind of pure platinum gold, but very, very similar. All right, so let's go into a few other comparisons. I also wanted to swatch some shades from the new Pat McGrath Mothership 10 palette. So here is the lilac one. Okay, so that's a little bit more of a fine shimmer, a little less chunky than either this one or that one. Let's also go with this shade over here. Okay, a little bit more pigmented and smooth. Again, less of that chunky effect. Just for completeness, let's also go into this gold shade over here. Ooh, okay, that is more similar in effect, but this formulation from Pat McGrath, this new one where these are pressed rather than baked formulations, is a little bit different than her previous one. These do feel a little bit more wet almost, and they're a little bit more silky to touch, whereas her previous formulation definitely had a little bit more texture to it. So I would say the Addiction shade is much more similar to the OG Pat McGrath Blitz Astral formula in comparison to the new one. So let's also go into Divine Rose 2 and try out Astral Pink Moon since this is in the OG formula. And this is a very different shade. It has more of that pinky gold flip to it. But again, I think formulation wise, the OG Blitz Astral is fairly similar to this Addiction formula. And then let's also just round out the swatches with a comparison with Venusian Sunrise from her blush collection. So let me swatch both of these sides. Okay, so yeah, I think it's a pretty similar effect overall. Let me also just swatch these together, swirled. So I would say that the Addiction one is definitely more pigmented, but the coloration overall is pretty similar to these. So, okay, I guess the Addiction shade wasn't totally unique in my collection. If you have Venusian Sunrise, I think you can get a very similar effect, but this is just a little bit deeper, a little bit more cool toned. It's kind of like a deeper version of this purple shade. And here is a close up of all the swatches. So again, these are the four shades from the Addiction Eyeshadow Quad plus the blush. And then here we have Astral Solstice from Pat McGrath. Definitely the most similar shade to this Mariage shade. Then we have three shades from the new Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction palette. A little bit more muted in comparison to the Addiction. And then P Astral Pink Moon is also a little bit more muted and a quite different shade. And then here is Venusian Sunrise, the two shades individually and then mixed together. The purple side's definitely the most similar to this Orchid Dusk from Addiction. 
So on the whole, I would say if you are interested in Japanese makeup and like me, you're a huge fan of Pat McGrath and you like that sort of more pigmented, more colorful, more sparkly effect, then I think that Addiction is a really great brand to look into. It definitely stood out to me on the Japanese makeup market in terms of just being a lot more fun and interesting than a lot of the other brands. I mean, not to knock the other brands, I also really love the really natural looks that you can get using Suku, Clé de Peau, Shiseido, or other sorts of Japanese makeup brands. But as you can tell from these swatch comparisons, certainly if you are a big fan of Pat McGrath, Addiction is a decent adjacent brand to check out. Running through each of the products, I would say that the Skin Protector is the main product I'm not a huge, huge fan of. It's all right. I mean, I think if you want a really nice glowy primer or something that's just really no makeup makeup and that has decent SPF coverage and you're okay with some brightening or white cast effect, then I think this is an excellent product. For my personal makeup routine, I just don't have a ton of use for this, but this does exactly what it says it does, and it's a really good product for the category of makeup that it occupies. In terms of the eyeshadows, I think these are all super beautiful. So I basically got two to three formulations. So these two over here are in very much a satin finish. You can't really see much in the way of shimmer particles in them. And I think these are a gorgeous substitution for a matte shade. If you want something that's a little bit more forgiving and flattering on the lids, and also something that blends out super easily. Now, as you could tell from today's look, these won't necessarily give you the level of pigmentation as you would get with a matte shadow, but I think these are really nice for sort of an everyday look. In terms of this tiny shell shade, it's also technically in the same formulation as these two, which is why I said I tried two to three formulas out, but this one in person certainly has a little bit more glow to it. And I think this is definitely the shade I would normally not pick up for myself because it is just so natural. But I do think this does have a beautiful effect on the lids. And so I could see myself wearing this by itself if I really wanted a very minimalist makeup look. For today's look, I think it did a really great job of just providing a bit of a natural transition into my skin tone. In terms of this glitter topper though, this for me is definitely the star of the show. It's the most exciting formulation. I would definitely go back to Addiction just to buy more of this formula. It is so high impact on the lids and as much as I do enjoy these newer formulas from Pat McGrath, the OG Blitz Astral shades really have a special place in my heart. There's just something so unique about this sort of three dimensionality that you can get with them. And that's something I don't really get with any of my other eyeshadows in my collection. Now this sort of chunky effect is not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, for me, what really attracts me to it is that you can still kind of see the shadow underneath. It really has more of a topper effect because it doesn't cover that up. In terms of the blush, I would say that the formulation is not completely effortless to use. It looks really beautiful once applied to the skin, but to me, this reminds me a lot of the Surat blush. And so if you really like that kind of Japanese slurry formula, then I think you'll really enjoy this one as well. Well, I know tons of people love that formulation. For me, I find it a little bit finicky to work with just because after you apply it to the skin, it can stick a little bit and so you do have to kind of buff it out. Personally, I prefer an application of blush where it's more like sheer layers and then I don't really have to worry about buffing at all. That said, it still was pretty easy on the whole to apply and I think it leaves a really beautiful effect on the skin. It's definitely not flat matte at all. There's a very subtle sheen to it, but not from any shimmer particles, just from the finish of the blush itself. And so I would definitely consider buying more shades of this, especially to round out the palette and find something that matches this eyeshadow look. I think the next time I go to Japan, I probably will DIY my own palette. Most likely something a little bit more colorful than this. I did really like some of the green tones that they had in the catalog. So that's my current plan. So maybe I'll put something like that together and then pick up a blush that is more appropriate for this and go from there. So that's it for today's video. I would love to hear in the comments down below what you guys thought about this video. 
What did you think about these products? Are you interested in addiction? If you've had experience with any of addiction's products, I would love to hear what your favorite products have been because they had so many other products outside of just eyeshadow, blush, and the skin protector, but I kind of held myself back and only went for these. But if you have some favorites, I might pick them up in my next Japan trip. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.